Greetings, everybody. Uh, here we are again. This is the last lecture before you take your second test, and that test is over chapters three and four. So this is the final lecture we'll have, and then we'll want to take the test over three and four. Okay, so be aware of that. For you folks at home, you should always be able to look at your syllabi or syllabus and um, see when those due dates are for the test. And remember, you have uh, the, the due dates I give you in the syllabus, folks at home. That's the date you have to take it by. You don't have to take it on that date. You have to take it by that date. And I always have it in there at least a week uh, before that date. So that gives you a little window of time to put it into when it, when it works best with your, your schedule. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. I gave you a lot of homework, but uh, some of them didn't take that long, hopefully. Let's go ahead and do quick study 4-1, okay? Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the test specifically and what's going to be on there uh, a little later today. But I do like to ask you a question, uh, kind of like quick study 4-1, all right? And Quick Study 4.1 says, list the following steps of the accounting cycle in their proper order. Okay? Now, you guys have learned a lot in the last, you know, 16, 17 class periods. And uh, I want now, we, we've been kind of focusing in on making journal entries and making adjusting journal entries and making closing journal entries and all that sort of stuff. Now I want to take a step back and kind of look at the overall process, and this should make a lot more sense than if we did it a couple weeks ago, okay? Um, so quick study 4.1, the very first step, the very first step in the accounting cycle process is to analyze transactions and events, okay? Different events will happen, and we will analyze those and then we will make journal entries or journalize them, correct? Okay, so we will analyze things as they happen and then we will make journal entries. What's the next step? Then we're going to post those. We post those to the T accounts or to the ledger, right? Make sense? The next thing we do after that is we prepare the unadjusted trial balance the unadjusted trial balance. Okay, let me, let me highlight. That's the unadjusted trial balance. Okay, then what do we do? Well, we journalize and post the adjusting journal entries. And then we prepare the adjusted trial balance. Okay? Now, what do we do after we prepare the adjusted trial balance? Anybody know? Yes, that's correct. That's when we prepare the financial statements. Okay? We prepare the financial statements. All right? Um, let's go through the rest of this and I'll talk a little bit more about that. What do we do after that? Then we journalize and post the closing entries. Closing entries are different than adjusting journal entries. And then we prepare the post-closing trial balance. Those are the steps. Now, one thing I always want to point out is, for some students, it seems like preparing the financial statements should be the, the final step. It's not the final step, is it? We prepare the financial statements after we prepare the adjusted trial balance. Because once we close all those revenue and expense accounts and withdrawal accounts, we're going to have a real hard time making our financial statements, aren't we? Okay? So that is the order of events there. Is, he, is there any questions on that? Okay. Um, I always ask that on the test. I'm probably not going to give you all nine steps and ask you to put them in order. But I may, give you a, uh, I may give you a few, and then you have to put the rest in there or do it as a multiple choice or something. I, I promise you I'm not going to have a, a question that says, list the steps. And you have to memorize all nine of those and write them out. I, I guarantee it won't be that. It'll be some sort of multiple choice, or you'll be able to choose from the steps or whatever. Does that make sense? But that's on the test. OK, cool. 
All right, let's go to quick study four, three. Quick study four, three. And this one was simply asking um, you to compute the current ratio, wasn't it? Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out here is, do you guys know what your current assets and your current liabilities are? Do you guys know that? Okay. We went over that in class the other day, didn't we? Now let me point out something real quick on Angel. Whoops. Hold on a second. Let me talk while I'm doing this. Um, we're going to talk about, you can keep it on me for while I'm doing this. Um, we're going to talk a, a little bit more about current assets and current ratios. And current, current assets, current liabilities, and the current ratio. Like I said, I will ask you that on the test. I don't always ask that, but I want you to know that ratio because that's one of the most important ratios I said that businesses use. Okay? So make sure that you put that down there. One of the most important things that you need to have to be able to do the current ratio is an understanding of what your current assets are and what your current liabilities are. Okay? Now I want to show you something I put in your uh, angel here. Okay? So let's let that come up. You know, generally speaking, I try to put everything in angel for you guys, and I put it for you folks at home, of course. Okay, go over to the screen. It would be nice to have a refresher on how to get into angel. Uh, log in to angel. Okay. And then you're going to put in your... Put in your name and password. My password is 1234567. No, I'm kidding, it's not. Um, then go to your class. Go to lessons. Go to handouts distributed in class. I've got several things in there for you. Go to the chapter, this talk to chapter 4. Okay. Um, I have a list of current assets and liabilities for you. I also have a chapter 3 and 4 review sheet for the test. We're going to be talking about that a little later. And then we're going to have something we're going to work on here in class. But um, let's go ahead and just open that up. Because this is something I want you to know for the test. Okay? Something I want you to know for the test. Okay? And um, take a look at that. That is your list of current assets, any asset expected to be used up within one year, and that is a list of your current liabilities, any liability due within one year. Okay? So I'm not going to get real tricky with you, but I want you to know that for the test. I guarantee you you're going to have a test question where I list out different assets and liabilities, and I want you to tell me is it a current or is it a non-current asset or liability. Okay? So if I said accounts receivable, you'd check current. If I said fixed assets, you'd say non-current. Okay? If I said unearned revenue, you would say current. If I said no long-term notes payable due in five years, you would say non-current. Right? Okay? So that is in there. You don't have to write that down. It's out on Angel there for you. And I think we kind of discussed most of these anyway the other day, didn't we? But I kind of wanted to get into a form, get it into a formal list for you all. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead with that knowledge and let's go ahead and take a look at Quick Study four three, and we'll also look at Quick Study four four. All right. Okay. Quick Study four three. Uh, compute the current ratio using the following information. Okay. Well, the first thing that we have to do is we have to know which are the current assets and which are the current liabilities, right? So, for this specific client or this specific company, the current assets are cash, AR, office supplies, prepaid insurance, right? And those add up to 25,300. Kara? Is it wouldn't buildings yeah. be a part of that? No. Good, good question. Buildings are a long-term asset. Think about if you bought a building in a business. 
Would you expect to derive all of your use from that building in the next year? No. That's a long-term asset, okay? JCCC bought the building you're sitting in probably 35, 40 years ago, and we're still enjoying the benefits of it, right? It's a long-term asset. So any fixed assets like buildings, equipment, automobiles, land, uh, office equipment, those are all long-term. Those are not current. So we don't include those in the current assets, right? With current assets, there's this understanding somewhat of some liquidity there, okay? Liquidity means close to cash. And even with some of the current assets we use, there's some question on that, but we'll talk about that in other chapters. The current liabilities in this example are accounts payable and unearned revenue. Once we have the current assets total and the current liabilities total, we can figure out our current ratio, and in this case it's 1.81. As a rule of thumb, you know, your current ratio, you feel best if it's around 2.0. You certainly want it more than 1.5. I don't think they gave us any information in this one on what their competitors were, did they? So we can't really evaluate it too much. This is more just comp computing it. Now make sure you don't round that to 1.8 or certainly not to 2.0. I like to always do my ratios out to two decimal places. Okay? Don't round too much or you can lose some of the meaningfulness of them. All right? So pretty straightforward. Any questions on Quick Study 4.3? Any questions on that? If not, let's go ahead and move on to Quick Study 4.4. Okay. Quick study 4.4 four, um, is they want us to look at these different assets and liabilities and uh, select the letter of the balance sheet category where the item typically would appear. And this goes towards some of our knowledge in regards to the classified balance sheet, which we lectured on last period, right? Okay. So, where would trademarks go? You don't really know about that, but that is an intangible asset, D. So number one is D, intangible assets. What about accounts receivable? That's A, that's a current asset, isn't it? Okay. Number three, what about land not currently used in the operations? Well, that's kind of a tricky one. I wouldn't ask you that on test, but that's actually a long-term investment because it's not used in operations. If it was used in operations, it would be a fixed asset. Okay? So number three is B. Number four is notes payable due in three years. And you always have to know when the due date of these notes payable is. Okay? You can't just say, what is notes payable? Because if it's due in six months, it's a current liability. If it's due in three years, like in this case, it is a long-term liability, which is F. So number four is F, as in Frank. Number five, cash. That is a current liability, or sorry, a current asset, correct? Number five is A, a current asset. What about wages payable, number six? That is a current liability, E. Number six is E. Number seven, store equipment. We talked about this just a few minutes ago. Number seven, store equipment is a plant asset or fixed asset which is letter C. So number seven is C. And number eight, accounts payable, is E, a current liability. Does that make sense? All right. So if you missed any of those folks at home, there's the answers to Quick Study 4.4. Okay? All right, any questions? Any questions on, I think we've, have we done all the quick studies now? We're zooming through these, aren't we? Okay. Okay. No questions? Let's take a look then at exercise 4.1. Now exercise 4.1 wanted you to do some closing entries, correct? And these were, uh, these T accounts that they wanted you to close from, 
These weren't your normal T accounts with the balance at the bottom. These are more like you would see in real life or in the computer, where, where the balance is kind of carried over to your right. But I hopefully, hopefully that didn't cause too much confusion. Now remember with closing entries, um, we have to first close our revenues to income summary. Then we close our expenses to income summary. Then we close our income summary to capital. Then we close our withdrawals to capital, right? Okay. Um, and let me back that up. Make sure you can see that. There are the answers to the closing entries on exercise 4-1. Now, if yours looks a lot different than that, and you, here's what I want to avoid. Sometimes people go, well, mine looks different than that, but I think it's okay. No, it's probably wrong, okay? Um, it needs to look pretty much exactly like that. You do not need those little, you do not need the little explanations, okay? But if you've got income summary, for example, down here at the bottom, that's probably, that, that's wrong, okay? Kara? Uh, if you do the expenses first, is that okay? Or do you, should you do the revenue, then expenses, then capital? Well, here's what I would say. I'd say a couple things in regards to what you just said. If you, did, if you closed the expenses and then the revenues on a test, I probably wouldn't take off for it. But I always encourage people as much as they can to do it, do it to what people are used to. Because remember, other people look at this stuff. So I would try to close your revenues and then your expenses. The other thing I want to say is the way you said that third closing entry, I want to be careful. The third closing entry, we are not closing capital. We're closing income summary to capital. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Did anybody put the wrong number in that, that third closing entry. If you put, uh, if the number you had in the third closing entry was 42,000, then you might be incorrectly thinking we're closing capital. We're not closing capital. We're closing to capital. Now, let me remind you, lest you forget, after this first and second closing entry, you need to do a T account, okay? Don't be lazy and don't try to shortcut yourself because whenever students do that, they have a tendency to miss points. We posted a $74,000 credit to income summary right there. Here we debited income summary for $52,100, okay? Now, what is the balance of that income summary account? What is it? It's 21,900, okay? How would you close this? Oops, I need to back up, okay? How would you close that? Well, you have to close, remember the third closing entry is to close income summary. How would you close that? How would you zero that out? You would debit income summary for 21,900. Now listen to me, folks. This number that goes in the third closing entry that number is derived from doing this T account. Sometimes the, one of the most common questions I get is, where do you get that 21,900? I get it by doing a T account after the first and second closing entry. Marlon. The 21,900, that represents a net income or yes. no? Yes. Okay. In this situation, you're exactly right. We have a net income situation because our revenues are greater than our expenses. That's not always going to be the case, and we're going to look at an example of that today. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, then I think they wanted you on this one not just to post the closing entries, but then to post the entries to the ledger accounts, right? And what they're trying to get at to there, who's got a yellow highlighter they can throw at me? Somebody? See that, folks at home? I caught that. I got great hands. Okay. What they're trying to get across there is the balances after closing are zero in your temporary accounts. Now, is it zero in capital? No. 
because capital is not a temporary account. It's a permanent account, correct? But in your temporary accounts, the balance is zero, correct? All right. Okay, any questions on exercise 4-1? The second part going to be on the test? Oh, I don't know. You know, I always have to be, I always have to be cognizant of how much time you have. So I don't want to say no, but if I did it, it would probably be in a way that would be quickly answered. Okay? I guarantee you, you'll have to do closing entries. I guarantee. Posting them, I might try to ask a conceptual question. Okay? Any questions, other questions on qu exercise 4-1? If not, let's do exercise 4-3. Now here they give you an adjusted trial balance on exercise 4-3, and they want you to do the closing entries and then do the post-closing trial balance. Is that correct? Okay. So let's do that. Once again, we close the revenues out. We close the expenses out, okay? And then what do we have to do after that second journal entry? What do we have to do, folks? We gotta do a T account for income summary. Okay, the first entry, we credited income summary for $36,000. The second one, we debited income summary for $28,100. So what is the balance of that now? What's the balance of that? 7900 7, So if I want to zero out income summary, and I do, what do I have to do? I have to debit it, right? And there it is, right there. That number's derived from the T account, okay? So I close out income summary, and I close it to capital. Marlon, this is also a net income situation, isn't it? And doesn't it make sense that we are crediting capital? Because capital we know to be a credit balance account. Thus, if we are crediting it, we are increasing it. And from our statement of equity, equity we know that net income is one of those things that increases capital. Correct? Marlon. So if, it, uh, if it's a net loss, would we uh, yeah, we'd, that, yeah, we'd switch those there, two? Uh -huh. We're going to do an example of okay, that. Okay, okay. He's asking how we handle it in a net loss. We're going to do one here in class in a few minutes on that. Okay? Awesome. And then, of course, that final closing entry is to close withdrawals. All right? Final closing entry is to close withdrawals. Withdrawals is a debit balance account, thus we credit it. All right? Then they want you to do a post-closing trial balance. Okay, a post-closing trial balance. Now again, the post-closing trial balance, the only purpose of that is so that you look at that and make sure there are, not, there are not any temporary accounts that have balances. Okay, everything on here is a permanent account, right? Now, if you, if you made the mistake of putting the beginning balance of capital in of 46,600, this thing doesn't balance. The, the debits don't equal the credits, do they? Remember, the balance of capital is the beginning balance of 46,600 plus the 7,900 credit that we posted to it in the third closing entry. And then we debited capital for 6,000 in the fourth closing entry. And that gives us our ending balance of 48,5, which goes into post closing trial balance. Is that correct? So remember that capital balance. You have to have the beginning balance and then this third and fourth closing entry posted to it to get your new balance. In a way we've flushed all the revenues and expenses into the capital balance. Cool? All right, any questions on exercise 4-3? Any questions? Okay, then let's do something here real quick. Um, go ahead and 
I'll pass these out. You can show this on the Elmo while I'm doing this. What I want you all to do is just what Marlon was asking about. I want to look at a situation where we have a net loss situation. Because we know companies have net losses, don't they? Okay? So here, and for you folks at home, this is in the this is in that chapter four lessons, under lessons, under handouts, under chapter four, there is this exercise. But I want to spend some time for you folks here in class and for you folks at home, you don't want you to do it too. Let's do what they're asking, which is to post the four closing entries and then to do a post-closing trial balance. So let's take some time, have the music play, and we shall do that. I'll see you in a few. Okay.
I want to make sure we have time to go over that answer. If you folks at home aren't done with it, just pause it and pu push play when you are done. Um, okay, let's take a look at this one. This is a, uh, this is a situation where we close the revenues, we close the expenses. Those are your first two closing entries there, right? Okay. Now, what do we have to do after the second closing entry? We have to do the T account. Okay. So, the first closing entry, we credited income summary for 6000 The second one, we debited income summary for 6660 right? Now, is this a net income or a net loss situation? Net loss. It's a net loss, right? Because the revenues are less than the expenses, correct? So, what is the balance of this income summary? Now, do not, as a reminder, an income summary or any T account never, ever, ever has a minus sign in it. Okay? Doesn't have a minus sign. So, what is the balance of this account? 660 on the debit side. Don't put negative 660 here. Shouldn't, there's no negative signs. I don't care whether you do a, a, a hyphen as a negative or parentheses as a negative. There's no negatives. So, how do we close, our third closing entry is to close income summary. How do you close this account? How do I zero out this situation? I credit income summary for 660. Right now it has a zero balance. So I have to credit income summary. So our third closing entry is thus. Okay? We credit income summary for 660, and here we debit capital, right? Now this should make sense, because this is a net loss, right? And by us debiting capital, we are decreasing capital, which is on the statement of equity, we would be de decreasing capital, would we not? Okay? And then that final closing entry is the same, we close withdrawals. So that is the third and the fourth closing entry. Questions there? Let's take a look at that post-closing trial balance. There's the post-closing trial balance. Did that agree? How many people got that? Raise your hand. Make sure I did it right. Okay. Now remember that capital balance of 28,340. I'm sorry, 23,840 is your beginning balance of capital and then that third and fourth closing entry posted to it. And those were both debits, weren't they? Don't get, don't get lazy. Don't try to skip your T accounts and the postings. Are you going to mark us off if we don't do a T account? They, I, don't, I think they confuse me because they don't have a debit or credit balance, so I don't like them. <laughs> okay, well, if you don't, I mean, um, I, I think you should understand them, but in this sort of situation, and with what I asked, if you didn't have a T account, that's fine. Okay. If you can do this, okay. But you know, I want you to try to understand T account. You're probably closer to understanding them than you think, okay. All right. Now I made a big deal uh, when I handed this out to you to say that this is closing entries in a net loss situation. You might want to write that on your answer here because I don't want you later on looking at this and going, now wait a minute, I thought we credited capital, what's the deal? Well, we, we debited capital in this situation because it's a net loss situation. All right? All right, any questions on that handout? If not, I want to go through those last three exercises real quick. And that was, they gave you information and they wanted you to prepare an income statement, statement of equity, and then a classified balance sheet, right? So let's take a look at exercise 4-4 first of all. Now I'll talk, but just go ahead and leave the camera on the Elmo, all right? Um, I, I haven't written the test. I'm not sure or I'm not, I don't know yet if I'm going to ask you to do financial statements. I always have to be aware of the time. However, you should always be able to do financial statements, okay? Remember, that's the main purpose of 
of accounting is to prepare financial statements to help users make better decisions. Okay? So there was a net income of $27,500 in the income statement. Of course, that's prepared in proper form with the name of the company, the name of the statement, and it's dated properly, isn't it? This should be review. And then that net income flows down to the statement of owner's equity, correct? Can you see that back there? All right. Okay, any other que any questions on that income and statement of owner's equity? Now, the ending balance of that capital count is 169,500, right? That's going to flow over to the classified balance sheet. Okay? The classified balance sheet. Now, this one wasn't as subtotaled as the one in the slides that we went over, but the important, one of the important things on here is they did a subtotal for both current assets as well as current liabilities, right? Of course, your total assets equal your total liabilities plus owner's equity. Of course, it's dated in proper for, or prepared in proper form. The name of the company, the name of the statement, and either at December 30, 2011, 31, 2011, or as of, or just the date, but not for the month ended. Remember that? Okay. So that is your classified balance sheet. Okay. Now yours might look a little different, and that's fine. You know, there's always a little wiggle room on how you prepare your financial statements. Okay. Any questions on that classified balance sheet? It's a good, good refresher on preparing financial statements, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun to do, I'm betting, wasn't it? I knew it would be enjoyable for you. Okay. Now, the next question they ask you, they actually ask you to do the current, uh, the current ratio for this situation, right? Well, looking back at that classified balance sheet, we have our subtotal for current assets and for current liabilities, and thus our current ratio is as such, which is pretty doggone near the other one we, did, we computed, did, isn't it? Okay, I need to change the numbers a little bit. Okay, the current assets were 25.5, the current liabilities were 14, thus our current ratio is 1.82. Now the industry norm, it says, is 1.5, right? So just looking at that measure, we can see that it exceeds that, which is good. Slightly better position. Remember what the current ratio measures. Does it measure a company's profitability? No. It measures a company's ability to pay its short-term debts in the near future, right? Okay. So if you got that classified balance sheet, you probably got that right. Okay. Any questions? We have about three minutes left. Are there any questions on exercise 4-4? four, five, or four, six. Okay. All right. One thing that I also put on Angel, under Lessons, under Chapter 4, I put this review sheet, okay, for the test. And I think we, uh, you folks here, I might have emailed it to you. Did I? Okay. Now, you don't have to copy this down, you at home or you here, because it's in, it's on Angel. Okay? But let's just touch on some stuff real quick. Um, I want you to be able to do something like Quick Study 2 3. That's where I say, how do you cause the indicated change? Okay, hey, now don't leave on me yet, folks. Okay, give me another minute here or so. I want you to make sure you can do adjusting journal entries, like exercise 3 2 and 3 3. Now, didn't we last period, I also showed you those extra AJE handouts on Angel under Chapter 3 that you can do for practice, right? And the answers are on there, okay? Back to Chapter 3, make sure you can do a salary accrual problem like Quick Study 3.5 or 3.6. Make sure you can do closing journal entries and a post-closing trial balance like Exercise 4.3, which we did today. And folks, 
make sure you are shifted into the right gear on the test. Don't be, have your brain shifted into adjusting journal entries and I'm asking you to do closing journal entries. You see what I'm saying? Or vice versa. Read carefully. Make sure you're shifted into the right gear. Back to this. Make sure you, I'm going to list you accounts and you've got to tell me whether they're permanent or temporary. We know that our permanent accounts are assets, liabilities, and capital, right? We don't close those accounts. What are our temporary accounts? Revenues, expenses, um, withdrawals, and there's one other one. What's that? Income summary is temporary. We zero that out. We close that out. So I'll give you a list of accounts and you tell me whether they're permanent or temporary. Make sure you understand the correct order of the steps of the accounting cycle. We talked about that already. I'm going to give you a list of accounts and you have to tell me whether they're current or non-current. And we talked about that today too, didn't we? Okay. And then lastly, make sure you understand the current ratio. All right. Now you guys got some time to study for that. You have lots of resources. You've got a practice test out there. You've got demonstration problems in the back of your chapter. You've got multiple choice quiz in the back of your chapter. Both those, all those things have answers to them. You've got these extra handouts. And of course, what's the number one way to study for my test? Get a blank piece of paper out and see if you can redo the homework. Okay? All right, next time we see each other um, on camera, we'll be going over chapter five. All right, good luck on the test, everybody. Bye-bye.